Hayworth. Tell me about that great lady again. I, I just, every time I think of looking at you, I think yes. of her, because she's such a great actress. Yeah. She happens to be one of my favorite actresses. Well, Susan Hayward was an incredible lady. Uh, uh -huh. Just so real, so natural, you know. Uh -huh. What you see was what you got. So she was great. It was wonderful working with her in Demetrius and the Gladiators as the mad Caligula. As the mad Caligula. Yeah, right. fun. The robe was great. That must have been fun. Victor Mature. Tell me about Victor Mature then. Well, I don't think Vic really ever cared that much about acting. You know, he used he to. Did? No, no. I mean, he was. You know, Vic is still with us. Vic I is. Know. Uh, I think it's down in Rancho Mirage. I haven't seen him in many, many years. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, plays golf. Uh -huh. And uh, you know enjoys his life now, but I don't think he was ever that into that, acting. No, not really. I mean, he had he did an it for incredible the money, career. Think? Yes. Well, who knows? But uh, uh -huh. he was a big star. But I don't think that you know the actor right. thing really ever meant that much to him. Uh -huh. So when you know he retired, I don't think it, it bothered him that much. You know, when I think of Jay Robinson, those days you were in the prison and uh, for a lousy cigarette, getting back. A yeah, lousy yeah. little marijuana cigarette. And this is 1991, <laughs> yeah, Charles. Right. I mean, it's silly what's yeah. happening to the world today. Yeah, I mean, well, you, you know, have, it's you, a you whole have regrets th about that? No. Are you no bitter? Well, I have regrets you that, uh, you know, that I got into that scene briefly in the late 50s. Uh, it was all over. My, my whole drug thing was like 1957 to 1960, right. and then it was over. And I just put it aside, and that's 31 years ago. Right. So uh, the punishment didn't fit the crime. It didn't? No, no. I mean, the prison been... sentence and yeah. then losing the Hollywood career, and you know, but that was then, and this is now, and uh, it's unfortunate. So that you're not it bitter? Happened. You're oh, not bitter? No, no bitterness at all. I mean, bitterness eats you up. Right. I mean, they right. took me off the screen for 10 years. Not, not the little drug thing, but the, you know, all the publicity and everything that followed the, uh -huh. the problems. And it was a very heavy price to pay. But um, I got through it, and I'm stronger and deeper uh -huh. as a result of what happened. And you know, it's, it's interesting, Skip, how if you allow it to, uh, it was so enriching as an actor. I mean, one wouldn't choose to go through it again. But when I came back, right. um, I had much more depth. Yes. And uh, the roles now have more solidity and depth to uh -huh. them. I mean, playing Caligula in the robe and Demetrius and the gladiators, wonderful. But now there's a different element Another to different my work. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And all that suffering, all that pain, all that agony, all that deprivation and poverty and being the, the pariah, the leper, the outcast uh -huh. in Hollywood for those years. Um, and now I see people that, you know, I knew back then, the, uh -huh. some that are still alive. Right. And, and Jay Robinson, the survivor. Uh -huh. So, uh, but, and, you know, I say not, you know, where were you when I needed you? I just say, yeah, I understand, because people, people are afraid. I mean, they're afraid it's going to rub off. Uh -huh. And they, you know, if, if, if you're in trouble, I mean, that's when you, that's when you know I you're real friends. Yes, I mean, yes. because after all, uh, Skip, you know, it's easy to be a fair weather friend or a sunshine soldier. Uh -huh. You know, when things are going great. And, uh, but whatever, we're out the other side of it long time ago, and uh -huh. things are going so beautifully again. Uh -huh. And at age 60, I'm just looking forward to, you know, to the, the great stuff that's ahead. I'm looking at you, and yeah. I'm saying, God, what a wonderful human being within yourself. You find yourself to become a great human being. I mean, it, this, well, with all the suffering yeah. that you have in Hollywood, well, you, I think... You, you forgive everybody. You forgive. Oh, sure, sure. And I think, too, uh, you know, when the comeback, my book, came out, right. so many people wrote to me from all over the world, and they said, um, we are so encouraged that you came through, and you came through stronger. Strong. Mm -hmm. People who, for the smallest of reasons, maybe were going to break up their marriage, Right. See, and my marriage has endured. Now it will be 31 years on February 8th. People that, because their career has taken a slide, or they're in the pits at the moment, uh -huh. you know, are thinking of, uh, of uh, getting out of the business or committing suicide or whatever. Gee, you got through. Yes. And this has encouraged us. So uh -huh. maybe, 
you know, in a broader sense or a greater sense, this is the benefit for going through the hell. Uh -huh. You know, because now I can pass on that we don't have to give up. We don't have to kill ourselves. Uh -huh. We can survive, we can overcome, and we can be stronger on the other side. You're very religious, aren't you? Spiritual well, within yourself. Well, yeah. Uh, I you really... Have, oh, go ahead. Well, I, I just... Uh, I don't know. I think all of this really happens for a reason, and... Maybe you know, you're a stronger person, Jay. Yeah, oh, definitely person. stronger. Yeah. Stronger. What do you think of Hollywood today as 1991 Jay Robinson? You've been um, here... You know, what do you think of it today? Well, it's a different Hollywood. It's the same in that, you know, I... Uh, Pauline, my wife, and I were at a party when, when the uh, May West, the last May West film, Sextet, Sextet mm -hmm. opened. And it, it was interesting because Army Archard was outside interviewing uh, me, and I stepped out of the big limo and uh -huh. there, you know, put me on the, <laughs> on the, uh, platform. On the platform uh -huh. and interviewed me, and I had a great role uh, in that movie, Born Again, at that point. Right. And, uh, but anyway, everybody, but speaking of what we were a moment ago, everybody uh -huh. rushed up and said, Oh, if we could have, if we would have known where you were during the, the, the black years, uh -huh. as Betty Davis used to call them, or, uh -huh. or ten black years. Uh -huh. But uh, uh, we would have, of course, come to your rescue. And of course, I said, well, of course you would have. Uh -huh. But uh, we went to the, the May West party afterward, I think, right. at the Century Plaza. Uh -huh. Now, I'm looking around the room with that, with that long view, that eye of wisdom. Right. And I'm seeing the young kids who would do anything for the break. Right. Anything. And I'm looking at the stars that are presently there. Right. And uh, they're very secure because everything's going great. Right. And I'm looking at the ones that are kind of over the hill, that sort of fear and desperation in their eyes. I saw the whole panoply of Hollywood, the whole spectrum of Hollywood mm -hmm. laid out before me. But essentially it's the same town. Uh -huh. And of course, you don't have the studio protection now, but you... You know, and actors have a great deal more power and influence, and, but it's the same, really. Uh -huh. Jay Robinson, you lived as Caligula. You lived a few years. When you, when you got that role, you said you walked in, you did Caligula, yes, you got the role yes, right away, yeah. you came to Hollywood, yeah. 21 years old. Right. 20, yeah, 20, 22 years 22 old. 22 years old. Right. My God, that's an outrageous role you did. You were an outrageous person. <laughs> you, you lived in a house with yeah. no furniture, I understand. Well, well later, later. Later when I had later. to sell it all. You had, no, you, know. you had to sell? Tell me about that. What do you mean by it? Tell, tell me about you had to sell all your furniture and your big, beautiful home in oh, Beverly Hills. Oh, yeah, yeah. But those are the trappings of life. That's not the reality. That's not the truth of life. Uh -huh. I mean, all the veneer. I mean, we become so caught up in things, Yes. you see. We, I mean, the attachment to things, our clothes, right, our furniture, right. our jewels, our cars. Not important, is it? When it's all stripped away, then you get down to the essence. Then you begin to really grow if you get through the fires, you know. You've but it was the second career was the, uh, the interesting. The, what is your second career? What is well, coming up? Well, it began you? in '68. Right. And then um, there was the uh, first. There were, you know. Shampoo. Uh, no, no. The first thing was uh, was Star Trek. I mean, Star the first Trek. one that people. It's the, is yeah, this that it? one. That Star one. Star Trek. With William Shatner. Ah. Can you get that? Can we get this? That's yeah, now that's what this, people will remember. That was an uh, episode set. called Elan of Troyes. I was Lord right. Petrie, uh -huh. and that's been shown a thousand times. Uh -huh. And then uh, the following year, and then, let me see. Oh, there, here's one that people remember, Bewitched. Bewitched. Let's yeah, see this. Yeah, this is Bewitched. Let's see this. <laughs> ah, there Bewitched you are. Bewitched with Elizabeth Montgomery. I don't know the girl's name that played Cleopatra. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. This one was written for me it, uh, uh -huh. because it was a sort of a takeoff on the Caligula thing. Caligula, yeah. It's called Samantha's Caesar Salad. Uh -huh. So that happened. Uh -huh. And then... Uh, and then what happened? What is well, this now? Well, let me see here. Oh, this is one that, that people will remember. I mean, if they're, I, I represent different things to different generations. Now, this is Dr. Shrinker, ah. which was an enormous hit uh -huh. on Saturday morning on the uh -huh. ABC network during 76, 77, 78. Uh -huh. And then... Um, then what happened to Jay Robinson? You did something with shampoo, though. Tell me about Did shampoo, shampoo with Warren, Warren Beatty. Beatty. That's a fascinating story. Tell me. Well, I had, I had given some time around, I don't remember, late 50s probably, uh, a fabulous party in Bel Air. Every star in Hollywood was there. You threw parties, yes, I heard. Oh, there were parties, yeah. yeah. No more, no, no more. Live very quietly. Spent a lot of money throwing those parties. Oh, was sure, it expensive, Jay? Sure. Throwing yes, all that money? Very expensive. Really? But there was a young Why guy. did you do that? Tell me, why? Well, I don't know. I mean, you know, when uh, 
after the when I ceased to be the big fish in the big pond, uh -huh. I wanted to be the big fish in perhaps a, a slightly smaller pond. Okay. So that hence so, the uh, the parties. So well, if that's an explanation. Yeah. So. Um, what did Gene Eagle say? Never complain, never explain, say nothing, and become a legend. But uh, yeah, well, the, the, the uh, young writer came up to me at one of these parties, Robert Town, who wrote Chinatown, yes. and who wrote uh, uh, Shampoo. Right. And I spent a few minutes encouraging him to follow his star. He was a young, unknown writer. And years later, Warren Beatty was doing Shampoo, and, and Bob Town was the writer. Uh -huh. And they called me over to the General Service Studios and said, um, you don't know why you're here, do you? And I said, no. He said, we have this wonderful role of Mr. Norman, uh, Warren Beatty's boss in the movie. Uh -huh. And uh, he said, you were so kind to me at your home that night with every star in Hollywood there. Uh -huh. You took 15 minutes to really deeply encourage me to pursue my star and what uh -huh. I wanted to do. I never forgot it, he said. So what goes around, you know, definitely okay. does come so around. So there are nice things happening yes. in Hollywood, though. Yes, There yes. are. You yeah. don't have to go to bed with somebody to get some nice no, things. No, I, don't, th I don't think that ever that really works. A lot of people think it does when they, you know, every day a, a young boy or girl gets off a plane or a train right. or a bus. Right. And, you know, after a while thinks maybe that's the way in. I don't think it is. You don't. I think it's, you know, it's, it's, it's what you can do. Uh-huh. Uh, but, uh, oh, and Woody Allen. Yeah, tell me about Woody Allen. Well, Woody Allen um, called for me to do a wonderful role. This is another one people will remember. Right. In Everything You Always Wanted to Know About Sex. Right. But We're Afraid to Ask. Uh -huh. And in the last uh, scene of that, that quite funny movie that was done in 73, uh -huh. there was something um, called the ejaculation sequence. Right. And I am the priest, this little figure all in black, right. who is dragged in to... Um, to, uh, uh -huh. because he has sabotaged the right. cerebral cortex. Right. This is on the VHS thing you brought me? Yeah, on that's thing? right. On the VHS. Right, right. We're, we're going to show, can I show a clip from that? I think sure, that's, sure. I think that's the clip on the VHS we're going to show right now. Okay. It is called from uh, Woody Allen's Everything movie. you always wanted to know about sex, but we're afraid to ask. Good. Woody Allen's movie. Let's see it. He's tied to a chair. He knocked him out. Is this true? What if it is? Don't you think you should be ashamed of this? Sexual relations between unmarried people? To take an innocent woman and assault her in a brutal, sadistic, ungodlike manner is blasphemy! Lock him up. Sabotage is over. Blasphemy! It's blasphemy! Oh. <laughs> Enjoy doing those things. Blasphemy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Tell me something. What's, yeah. what's new? And exciting in your life right now, Jay. Right, is, now. Yeah, right well, now, well, something just happened uh, yesterday. As uh -huh. a matter of fact, uh, they called from Universal, and I will be playing um, an Amish bishop and the spiritual leader of the community in an episode of Murder She Wrote uh -huh. uh, called uh, Murder Plain and Simple, and that will be airing probably uh, next month. We started in a week. Great. And uh, it's going to be very interesting because I've never met Angela Lansbury. really admire her and Great look act. forward eagerly to working with her. We have lovely scenes together. Uh -huh. Interesting because Peter Shaw, uh -huh. her husband all these years, was the man who discovered me and who got me my incredible contract at 20th Century Fox yeah. and suggested me for the role of Caligula in the robe 38 right. years ago. He's the one. He's the one who gave me my career in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, the, uh, here, here I am doing Murder, She Wrote with Angela Lansbury. The oh. second one I've done, actually. But the other one, I didn't work with Angela. Now right. this is another one. But playing an Amish bishop uh -huh. with the long hair, you know, and uh -huh. probably the Captain Ahab beard, right. The, right. you know, and the hat. and So uh, different roles now. I would never have thought of casting me in this role. You would based No, no. But when the call came, I said to my agent, what's the role? Uh -huh. And he said, it's uh, uh, Bishop Burkhart, uh -huh. a, a kind, compassionate, spiritual leader, uh -huh. gentle man, a kind man, a dear man. Uh -huh. But again, totally the uh -huh. opposite of Caligula. Great. You've done, a, you, you, years ago, you did a one-man show. Yeah. Get, let's get back. Years ago, again. You did a one-man show with all your characters. Is that correct? Tell yeah. Me, tell me about that. You did uh, Calitica, you did all of them. You, matter of fact, you got an award. 
You got an award. Yeah, oh, a number of awards. It was called Echoes and Encores. That's it. And it was um, just a, a compilation of scenes uh, from uh, some of my films, some of my Broadway plays. We right. did several versions of Caligula, the Caligula from The Robe, right. the Caligula from Eugene O'Neill's play Lazarus Left, uh -huh. the Albert Camus Caligula, different versions of Caligula, uh -huh. and then various Shakespearean readings from some of the plays I'd done, uh -huh. and a whole sort of a potpourri uh -huh. of stage and film roles. Very interesting and wonderful that I had that to fall back on in the uh -huh. black years uh -huh. because it paid the rent. And uh, you know what I would really like to do now? What would you like to do? I'm and, looking at you, really. Well, I, I would like to do a play. The last play I did was the picture of Dorian Gray as Lord Henry Wotton, the, wow. uh, the mentor of Dorian, right. and uh, off-Broadway about 25 years ago. Right. And uh, I don't know what the role would be now. I thought about uh, No Man's Land or Home or maybe Edwin Drood or A Life in the Theater. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of thinking about that it would be fun to either, as in the case of True, right. that Bobby Morse is doing now, you know. A one man. A one man, maybe telling the whole story and uh, with clips. So I don't know how you would do this. Tell and the one man story of, of Jay Robinson right. on stage. Right. It would be wonderful. Well, you know, um, good idea. Uh, periodically they've talked about doing a film of my life. Right. You know, the rise and fall of a Hollywood emperor uh -huh. and rise again. Uh -huh. But um, uh, uh, Betty Davis once said to me many years ago, she said, she said, you know, if somebody wanted, and Betty said, this is the greatest role ever written for an actor. Right. I mean, because you get to do, do it all. Right. And uh, so she said to me, but she said, I think if somebody won an Emmy or an Oscar for playing you, that would be pretty hard to handle, what you had to live uh -huh. through. Uh -huh to actually, you know, play this on the screen. Right, right. But I think if I could do, you know, talk about my life, right. but I don't know how this would happen. And of course, obviously, there would have to be a producer for this and somebody who's right. doing it. I think that would be fun to do. And, uh, but I, you know, I'm just, I keep feeling that I want to go back to the theater and do a Broadway play again. It's been... You were a young director. No, not the director, youngest, producer. Uh, producer. Producer. Yeah. How about doing, how about producing? How about producing? Oh, oh, I don't know. That's interested? that. Is you know, it, when I produced, you could do a Broadway play for fifty thousand. Oh. Now it's millions and millions of dollars, okay. and I think that would be quite beyond my my ability. But uh, does Jay Robinson sing and dance? <laughs> well, I dance. Yes, yes. Yes. I dance. Well, I don't. Know, I can dance on your anymore. One show, you know. No, no. But I did. I danced the Dracula drag. I played the Count in a movie oh. called Train Ride to Hollywood, and I sang once in a movie called uh, My Man Godfrey with June Allison and David Niven. Right. And a little song called Lovely in a duet with the Bloodhound. Tracular. Let's get back to Trent's. Oh, yeah. Well, the, yeah. This, this was the last, the last film I did. Yes. And uh, this is just a year and a half ago, sort of a low-budget film, kind of a fun, uh -huh. fun role. I had done uh, my, my year on the soap opera, Days of Our Lives. John playing Biner's uh, wife was in that with you. I know she was in that, John Biner. In, in which one? In, the, in this trans uh, Transylvania yeah. Twist. Yes. Yeah, well, Transylvania Twist, I played the world's greatest authority on vampirism. Uh -huh. And uh, anyway, in this scene yes. that I think you've got okay. there, uh, the, um, I'm, the, I'm the world's greatest authority on the black arts, okay. and I am believed dead, and I'm in the coffin. Very funny role okay, okay. as this old man, uh -huh. and you'll see what happens. Okay, let's see it. <laughs> Dr. Mallory. That quack in this cheap jack place didn't even bother to involve me. Help me, help me, help me. Dear me, this was rather unexpected. You can all go home. I'm not dead. Dexter, my boy, give me your arm. Get out of here, you, you miserable toadies. Phony bastards never saw one of them before in my life. Okay. That is just wonderful. 
You see yourself today on film. Yeah. From Caligula to this. Yeah, right. How do you feel? What do you think? I well, mean, you were the mad emperor. Yeah. I mean, come yeah. on. And then you see yourself as an old, old man. Come well, on. they had me all made up, you know, I with know. the I put the white death yeah. makeup uh -huh. on me, uh -huh. and uh, you know, I said, "What kind of makeup but are that's you?" That's great acting. You see, know, and the, and the and the hair a uh, little thin on uh -huh. top, and uh -huh. the whole, you know, and I'm walking out like uh, yeah. I'm on my last legs, <laughs> but. Um, Oh, it's strange. It's strange that I watch I watch the robe or Demetrius the uh -huh. Gladiators over yeah. the holidays. That's, that was on just recent again. Oh, and continually on the American Movie Classics Channel and the one. How do you feel, Jay Robinson, when you said it? It repeats all every year and as you grow older. What does I Jay Robinson think about this? It's strange. It's strange. You know, actors have this curious. Uh huh. Advantage. I guess it's an advantage. Although if you wanted to get depressed, <laughs> yeah. you could have because yeah. none of us like to no. to get older. Uh, but um, but I'm looking at you. Yeah, I can yeah. still see the sparkle. I can see <laughs> that spark. Yeah. yeah. Yes. 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 But um, it's strange because I have on film uh -huh. a sort of a pictorial <laughs> record of the aging process, <laughs> and. Um, oh yeah, yeah. All Betty the, Davis. Betty tell Davis. Me, tell me. Oh no. God. Jay. Betty Davis, you've known her, you've been with her, you spent time, she loved you, you loved her, you're yeah. very close. Yeah, we were very Tell close. Me some moments with being with Betty Davis. Well, some moments that you treasure. Can you share it with us? I got a little chill <laughs> thinking about it. I was up the other day uh, to Forest Lawn, to the, you know, the mausoleum or the crypt up there. Right. And there, on the left side, is Ruth Favor Davis her mother and uh, the inscription uh, of her birth and death date, not to get morbid, but a little faded now because I believe she died in the 60s. Right. And then Barbara Barry Davis, her sister, uh, that was, uh, she died in uh, whenever it was, a few years ago. Right. And then in the center, uh, always top billing, oh. there it says in larger letters, Betty Davis, uh, April 5th, I believe 1908, October 6th, 1989. And under it in quotes, she did it the hard way. And um, it, it, it just, it, uh -huh. it was very strange. I mean, we all have to die, but right. to see her in there because she was the most alive, vital, right. uh, uh, always in movement. And to think of her there, it just, it's unreal to me really unreal uh, uh, you know it's it just but she will always be with us uh -huh. because she's she's with us at all those films that that we see we right. first met how did you first meet well um, it was uh, during the filming of the Virgin Queen right. and uh, I was Lord Chadwick and she came on um, and uh, the beads break if I can remember uh -huh. I wish we had that clip here we don't and uh, 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 I'm there, she's there, uh -huh. and we just, we just clicked right, right away. Uh -huh. I mean, it was amazing, the, the rapport between us. Yes. And um, when, the, when the film ended, uh, she went back east uh, to her home in Maine. And, um, uh, you know, then there were the, the what she called the black years, the years mm -hmm. that she was married to Gary Merrill. Right, right. And the 10 black years. And uh, I met her after the great glory days. It right. was 55. Right. She had already done Margot Channing and yes. All About Eve. And she had done Two's Company on right. Broadway. And so this was, in a sense, her fir uh, this was her first film after about uh -huh. three years. What was her first, I mean, I mean, her very favorite film that she ever did? Did she ever tell you? Her well, favorite. I think her favorite role, All about probably Margot Channing, Channing. and yeah. she felt that, um, you know, I mean, this really uh, made the career, because the Warner days ended with the Beyond the Forest, I believe, right. was the last, uh -huh. uh, about the last film Did there. she ever talk to you about Baby Jane? Whatever happened to Baby Jane? Did she enjoy doing that with Crawford? Um, well, of course, that was her most successful movie. She yes. made the most money out of that movie. Did she really? Uh, that's what she told me with the percentage that she and Joan How she got, got that from role is by advertising in the Hollywood uh, I don't, Citizen not, newspaper. No, for, it was in the, no? I it was a reporter variety. Reporter? I don't know how that came about. I thought it was a Hollywood Citizen newspaper. Go ahead. Uh, but, but that's she um, advertised for wanted actors. You know, the thing that is not uh, 
generally known about Betty, or she's not thought of in this way, was her extraordinary generosity really? as a human being. I mean, we think of her in the brittle, you know, the on-screen roles. Right. But uh, when my book was about to uh, come out, mm -hmm. and they sent her the galleys, um, I think I told you when we talked previously, yes, right. that, uh, uh, that uh, she called and said, how have you survived this? And uh -huh. I said that, you know, from the ultimate survivor. Yes. She insisted on uh, writing it and putting the forward on the book. And then they, they used uh, a, a line from the comments that uh -huh. she had made, uh -huh. a powerful inspirational book for all who fall by the wayside. She wrote it in her own handwriting. I see. I see. And I'm sure contributed greatly uh -huh. to the sales on the book. Uh -huh. And then when they did This Is Your Life, Betty Davis, when right. Ralph Edwards did the This Is Your Life. Um, you were there. I was there. Olivia de Havilland was there. Paul Henry, Willie Wyler wow. was there. Um, so her you sister. Were, you meant something in her life. You were very dear to her. Yeah. Yeah. Jim I'd like to think that she, yeah. she wrote this incredible statement about uh -huh. me, saying I was one of the great actors of our time. Uh -huh. Give him a break. Give him another great role again. Let's forget the past, she said. Wonderful. How would you like to, to be remembered, Jay Robinson? How would you like to be remembered? <laughs> Please, wanna, tell me. I don't want to even think about that. Really? No, no, no. How would you like to be I, Well, I don't know how I would be remembered. Uh, I feel um, it's too early to think about that. It's just because I really feel the best is yet to come. I ah. mean, I absolutely... That's great. Skippy Low. That's great. I absolutely... You're see, ready. I see myself going up there. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is crazy. You know, uh, not crazy. It could happen. You know, right. the great role could come down the pike tomorrow. Exactly. And somebody, as the, is in the case of Donna Meech or whatever, say, mm -hmm. hey, this would be great for him. And I can see myself up there. And I'm, uh -huh. I'm already writing the speech, you know, uh -huh. when I get my Oscar. Uh -huh. Woody, so it's never uh -huh. give up. Never yeah. give up. Woody Allen said the same thing. I, uh, someone yeah. asked him uh, <laughs> about how, it, how it, his success. He yeah. says, just show up. Just show up and hit eventually, your marks. Huh? Eventually, time will take its place. If you keep standing Stand. at that table, yes, and you never give up, and you you know, all, or keep pulling the lever on the on the slot machine, right? You know, eventually it's gonna it's gonna come up a jackpot. Uh -huh. So uh, you know, along the way, there are uh -huh. all the bread and butter roles, the, the roles you take to pay the rent, uh -huh. the roles you 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 take to you know, to keep uh -huh. going, and at times I've even had to, you know, do other jobs, not too many, uh -huh. but along the way, never give up, never give up, and never uh -huh. really look back, look back too much. You don't, that's right. And the, and the trick is, um, I think more than anything else, my dear Skippy, yes. is just never be defeated. Never be defeated. Even we take the losses, we skid our knees, we skid our elbows, we fall down. Mm -hmm. But if we're never defeated in life, then we can, you know, we can accomplish anything we can envision. And uh, this, is, uh, this is wonderful. You seem like a wise man today. Well, 